What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Immersive Engineering and I've been doing a good amount of work off camera pretty much just on this side of my base working to get the crusher to look nice and function properly uh, and actually be happy with the way it works and I finally am so I thought I'd do a brief overview of this just so you guys know what's changed, what hasn't changed, all that good stuff and then we can jump into working with the thermoelectric generators and hopefully do some more upgrades around our base. So for the most part, this is pretty much the same. Everything is getting dropped in the crusher at the top, brought out down here using conveyor belts. And then it gets brought over to this area right here, which is pretty much the smelting area with a little bit of a chest buffer. So first things first, if you don't know, conveyor belts will just input into a chest if they're pushing into it. So right here, this is pushing items right into this chest and it'll just drop them in there right away. So anything that gets crushed in here, all the grit will come out, follow the conveyor belt and get put in the chest. So the chest is pretty much just acting as a buffer, and that's because if I were to come over here and toss just a bunch of different ores onto this conveyor belt, this machine could actually eat all of them, but it doesn't spit them out all at once. It does two grit at a time, uh, pretty much processing one ore, just like many other ore processing things. Uh, so it is a little bit slow. And so if I were to throw a bunch of different ores in there and they were all popping out, obviously they couldn't all go in the furnace because it's only got one slot in it. So this is just going to act as a buffer if there ever is a little bit of an overflow, just to be sure. And then it pretty much just drops down, gets cooked using the external heater, and then put into this chest down here. And then if we look over here, this is pretty much just an extra furnace because we can have it over here. We have enough power coming to the heater that we can just have an extra one if we need to cook, you know, stone or glass or anything else, anything obscure. We can just put it over there. And that is, for the most part, the setup. I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks really good, which is actually pretty important to me because I don't want to be working in a base that I don't like the way it looks. But I'm liking how the base is turning out. I expanded it a little bit, and that is mainly because uh, we're going to be working right over here. But one thing I want to point out before I do is I pretty much just made a little like mine shaft here because until we get the excavator, there's no really good way for me to get ores other than just mining them myself. There's actually pretty much no way for me to get them. So I've been doing a significant chunk of mining and this is helping out a lot now that I can double my ores, but still it requires a lot of mining. So hopefully we can get the excavator up and running very soon, but for now we are just going to settle with self mining and getting some thermoelectric generators set up. So we can come out here because we are going to need to start crafting stuff for the thermoelectric generators. And specifically, we can go in here and we can check it out. So I do have a bunch of steel. We're going to be making four of these. Um, so I have enough steel for that. I have 18 steel, and we're going to be using the rest later. But that means we need to make a bunch of these ingots. And I don't even want to try and pronounce that uh, constantin ingot. Um, but it is made from using the grit for it. But you make that grit using nickel grit and copper grit. So I do have the nickel grit in here, uh, right here, 26 of it but I, de I need to make some of this copper ingots down into copper grit. So what I want to do first is just make sure that I'm using the right amount. So we need five perf, we're going to do four, that means we need 20, which means we need 10 copper grit and 10 nickel grit. Just because we're going to use the copper ore today, so I want to make sure we're not turning too much into grit and then having to smelt it back down. So we will put 10 into the crusher and you guys can see how it functions. And for now, what I have to do over here, and hopefully I can get something set up to fix this later, is I take one piece of stone and just throw it in there. And what that does is it kind of clogs up the system just so that the grit will actually stay in the hopper right here and then I can grab it out without it getting cooked down. And this is very loud, so hopefully it doesn't bother you guys. But if you notice, if you go like right here, you can hear it. And then if you come a couple blocks away, you can't hear it. So it is kind of weird, but I don't think I'll be processing that many ores on camera, so I don't think I need to uh, really worry about how noisy it is. Unfortunately, we don't have the noise muffler. But if we come in here, we can grab the copper grit, and hopefully you guys can kind of get an idea of how this is working. I think it looks really cool because you can see the items on the conveyor belt. They're not just jumping from one machine to another, going through like conduits or something. Uh, you actually get to see the items moving, which is a really cool feature of this mod. So we got the copper grit, we got the nickel grit, we make this grit, and then we got to come over here and we get to use the furnaces to cook them down. So right here we can just split it, and I think these should both be able to function at maximum efficiency. And they actually do speed up as they go as the external heater is heating up. So something interesting is if you give a redstone signal to the external heater, it will stay at full heat. It will keep burning power, but then if you ever put anything into these, they will be going as fast as they possibly can. So that's pretty cool. Um, but you know, if you really don't have power to burn 
or you just don't see any point like me, then you really don't need to give it a redstone signal. Um, mainly because A, I don't see a point in it, and B, I actually don't have that much power to burn. But uh, yeah, so once we get these, oh yeah, this one's dumping them down here. Uh, but once we get these, we should be able to make the generators themselves, and then we can start putting them in the ground. And one thing I wanna talk about is the actual options that you have to use with the generators because if you don't know the thermoelectric generators essentially use a difference in the temperature gradient to create power so that means that if you have you know lava on one side and water on the other one is cold one is hot and the difference in temperature is used to create power uh, so i will discuss that a little bit once i finish this so hopefully i don't lose my train of thought completely but we actually do need to make a bunch of copper wire coils so we can grab all this copper wire out of here and grab the steel too because we're going to need that and i actually don't know if we have enough sticks and i think i'm out of wood so i may need to go and get some more wood but we can just make oh you know what what am i doing here we only need these four so we can make a good amount of these so that'll only cover two yeah we're going to need a little bit more so yeah, we're, we're a little bit short, so we got to go chop down a tree real quick. The sad part about being up here is there's really no trees near me. i got to run all the way over here to get them. So I'm thinking I might move some trees closer, plant some saplings. Hello, Mr. Enderman. I don't want to fight you because there's really no point. <laughs> okay, so we can just chop down these trees. doesn't really matter. Oh, and I'm going to have to go up there to make sure that there's nothing floating because these are so tall. Oh, I usually just do this. Even though I should probably use dirt, I just pillar up with the blocks themselves. And that one's stuck up there. We'll just we'll leave it up there. It's only one piece of wood. It's okay. But this will be good too because we are going to be needing more sticks later when we upgrade the wires running in our base for certain areas. So we're going to be doing that just because we're going to have a little bit more power flowing. So it will be nice to have upgraded wires. So we need to make one more set to actually finish these. And then we're going to need... Uh, let's say two more on top of that. So there we go. That should be good for now, just to start out. We're going to have to make a little bit more later. Um, and let's just put this to four right there, just so that we don't go over. We can get, let me just verify the, yep, that it's copper wire. Just making sure it wasn't electrum. So there we go. Put that in the center, line the bottom with that, and there we go. So we got four thermoelectric generators, and we can start putting these in. So I've decided I want to put them in somewhere around here. So I'm probably going to have the center block be right here. And I may shift this over one or two once I get the full system done. So uh, what we need to do is essentially pick a center block and then we're going to put the four of them around that. So they're going to go like this. And the center block is going to be lava. And I do have these weird pieces of cobble right here that are covering up the lava, mainly just because I don't want to walk in it because I don't want to die. So we're going to pick that up. And I am going to fence this off eventually just because I don't want to accidentally walk in here any other time, not just when it's out there. I don't want to walk in the lava here. And because we don't have micro blocks right now, I can't really cover it with anything that's not a big block. So yes, I could put glass over it, but then it just looks gross. So we're going to mine out all the different blocks that we're going to be filling with liquids. And it kind of forms a weird like diamond pattern so we got one like this and it's going to be lava in the center and then water on the outsides of all of these blocks and it is because you pretty much need to fill one side with the hot liquid one side with the cold and they need to be the opposite sides now when we're playing with only immersive engineering there's only two options for the gradient that we could use there's going to be lava and water and there's going to be lava and packed ice and lava and water are going to generate 15 rf per tick and the other one is going to generate 16 RF per tick. So there's not a huge difference, so it's fine to start out with water. Uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna try and get ice for this because I really don't see a point, or I, I don't see a point in packed ice, I mean. Um, but there are other things if you have other mods, like big reactors, I believe, that can give you a lot more power generation, but obviously we don't have access to those. But you can find that information on the wiki if you're playing this in a bigger mod pack and you wanna know about that. Uh, there are lists for all the RF per tick, now keep in mind that we are going to be doing all four sides of these, so two different gradients, and that means that we're gonna double the RF per tick, so we're gonna be getting 30 RF per tick for each of these. So it's gonna be getting us 
it's an okay amount of power. I mean, 120 RF per take is less power than these are getting us, but it's just another way of doing passive power generation. So it's okay on uh, okay by me that you know it's not the most effective thing around. But we're gonna set this up one way. You guys could set it up a different way if you really want to. But we're gonna do this and line the inside with lava, kind of going diagonally. And I should probably sleep. Uh, yeah, we should probably sleep just so that we don't get attacked. Yeah, I was checking a lot of different energy levels. Yeah, I mean, come over here and get my second bucket so that we can get some water. And start filling this in so we can get some nice power generation. Oh, you know what? I should probably make an infinity pool over here first. Just so that I don't have to keep running back and forth to get water. Okay, so we can put the water down there and there. There, there, and last trip that we need to make. Right like that. So now these should be getting power. And if you look at it, it might look a little bit weird. But you can see that there is lava here, water here, lava there, water there. And it just needs to be directly opposite the other one. So you got the same one going over here and for all of these. So it's just kind of a setup that works really effectively for maximizing the amount of power you're getting per block of lava. Now keep in mind, if you do have a way of getting power when you're stacking these on top of each other, um, you do need a source block per one. You can't just put lava at the top and let it go down. You actually need to have one source block next to each one, which is a little unfortunate, but it's not too bad. Uh, but for now, I'm just okay with using it like this. I don't feel the need to stack them because the power generation should be good enough for now. So uh, the next thing that we need to do is get the low voltage wire connectors. And we actually have some low voltage wire right here. And we are going to be hooking these up. So you're going to throw one on each. And then I can put one right in the ceiling. I want to know where the center is. I think it's right there. Obviously, I can't really stand on a block and look up because there's lava there. But we can wire all these up there and then we can transfer this back over here and we're gonna alter this side so that it is inserting power there and connect those so I'm just trying to make a point of running all the wires along the ceiling so in most cases the wires are gonna go up from the ground pretty much straight up and then over which as you can see is the case with most things around here uh, this one is kind of going at an angle, but that's just because I'm not going to be walking around here. It's not really hanging down in an awkward fashion. So we can fill this up right here with some stone. Just so we don't have an infinity pool in the middle of our base. And then what I want to do is take the rest of this steel and make it into these steel fences. And just kind of place them around this. So just kind of wrap this off from the rest of our base and there's no wall over here right now there will be eventually a wall right here i guess i can just kind of put one in right now just so that we have something to place this against i won't extend the ceiling but whoops we can just do this and we got one extra okay so that is the thermoelectric generator setup that i'm running and i actually think it looks pretty cool our base is coming along we gotta actually i think our base looks pretty cool right now but the next thing that I want to do, and the last thing for today's episode, is I want to upgrade certain portions of our cables. So right now, it is perfectly fine running these low voltage cables along this, but eventually we might be pulling out more power than 256 RF per tick, which is the amount that these low voltage wires can transport. So we are going to be upgrading to medium voltage wires going from right here over, which means that we need to make the wires themselves and then these connectors. And to do that, we are going to, let's take a look at them. We are going to need to make the connectors with just iron, which is really easy. The other ones required copper. Oh, my crafting bench is over here. I forgot I moved it. So we got the hardened clay and we're actually only gonna need to make one set because eight should be more than enough. So we got the medium voltage wire connectors and then we're gonna need to make the medium voltage wire itself, which is actually made with electrum. So we have six electrum left over from what we made last time. So I don't think this is gonna be enough. I need to count how many we need. So we need one, two, three, and four. So four is actually the perfect amount. So we don't need to waste any electrum doing that. So we can go along and we can break all of these. 
and replace each one of them. Hopefully nothing gets screwed up and like explodes, but <laughs> if it does, you know, you guys can have a laugh. So get these out and get the wire. And we can hook that up here. And I'm trying to think where I had it hooked up over here. It was directly in line with this. Is it, is it right there? I don't think it was right here, actually. There we go. So now we can connect these. And we got to put one right up there. There we go. Connect these. And then put two over here. Now, obviously, I could go from there to there, but... If I'm walking over here, I don't really want it in my face, so I'm just hooking it up like this, just because why not? So now we got different colors of wires running along our base. It's getting a little hectic in here, which is why I'm going to try and keep expanding the base just so that it's not really cramped. But I'm liking the way the base is looking. I kind of want to put some glass windows in here. I was cooking some glass down, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to use glass panes or regular glass blocks. So I still have to decide on that. But eventually I'm going to replace these torches with some of the lanterns because I love the lanterns that are in this. So there are the powered lanterns and there are the floodlights and everything. But then we can take a look at the regular lanterns, which should always be lit up. So right here, uh, they do take some glowstone, which I have. And then they take the glass panes and they take some iron. But you get four for that recipe. So I'm going to try and use those around the base eventually, but for now we'll just stick with torches. But let me know what you guys are thinking about the base, if you want to see anything specific about the mod, all that good stuff. If you have any comments or questions, as always, feel free to post them. I love when you guys post comments, and I hope you guys are enjoying the series. If you are enjoying the series and you like this episode, feel free to drop a like. It helps me out a lot, and I will talk to you guys later.